I've always said go back and listen to the, the amazing, the, to the, listen to the great players. Go back and listen to the great masters. You know, again, Coltrane, um, Sonny Rollins, Sonny Stitt. Um, um, I mean, on and on. Joe Henderson. Did I just say that? Um, uh, Charlie Parker, Stanley Tarantino, Dexter Gordon, Prez, uh, um, Wardell Gray, uh, Don Bias. I'm forgetting. I'm just. I'm leaving out all. You know, so many. But um, go back and listen to them, uh, as well as listen to the younger players today, and just learn whatever you can. Um, yeah, I'm a believer in transcribing things. Maybe not whole solos, but I, you know, I think uh, if you don't know what something is harmonically, it's wise to go in and, and f to you know listen carefully and try and sing it or write it out and figure out what it is so you know. Um, and I, I generally think uh, you know, if somebody plays enough, um, that your own personality is going to come through. If you're really trying to to approach music creatively, it's it's very important to learn from the. Uh, from the guy, from the whole history, the whole um, the heritage of the instrument and and other instruments, um, but then approach it creatively, and and and, uh, and I think uh, it just takes care of itself. You know. uh, we're all, you know, as far as the saxophone, we're all sort of constructed differently. Nobody ever sounds exactly like anybody else. Just tone-wise, it's a remarkable instrument on that level because nobody ever sounds exactly like anyone else. They're, you know, you can hear influences. Obviously, in me, you can hear um, tremendous Coltrane, Joe Henderson, influence Sonny Rollins. You know, those influences are tremendously there. Stanley Tarantino. Um, uh, there's a Johnny Griffin, Johnny Griffin influence there. There's a uh, George Coleman influence. Uh, yeah, and just to name a few, I mean, there's so many. Steve Grossman, um, Bob Berg, Jerry Berganzi, you know, of, of the, you know, of what used to be the younger players, now there's younger guys, you know, that I still listen to. Um, but I also sit around and try and come up <coughs> with my own ideas. Um, I, the ideas occur to me naturally. Um, uh, I, when I'm just playing, uh, just relationships of notes, or if I'm just playing the saxophone in a room, eventually I'll stumble onto a relationship that, that appeals to me, and I'll work on it. I'll, I'll usually write, if it's an ideal, I'll write it out, and eventually I'll get to it and try and put it in every key. Um, just for my own edification. Why the every key necessity? Uh, I just, I, uh, not everything sounds great in every key, but I just like to be able to have that facility. I still play better, I still favor certain keys, but I like to have the facility on the horn. I like to be able to get around the horn and not feel like I can only, um, you know, I can only play this or that in a certain key. Um, I like to know that I can, that, you know, that it's under my fingers in every key. Um, you know, obviously, every you know, there are certain ranges where certain things sound good. Uh, certain notes, certain combinations of notes, or, or uh, certain uh, um, cadences or melodic ideas will sound better, maybe higher than lower or mid-range. Uh, but I still like to be able to play things in every key. Just a personal thing that I do. Um, and. Uh, I also, you know, I learn a lot playing live. I've learned a tremendous amount this year from playing, uh, this year I've been playing a lot with McCoy Tyner, and that's, you know, I'm back to school again. Um, learned a lot from listening to him. Uh, uh, his, you know, aside from the, you know, vast harmonic and, you know, you know resources, and, the, you know, the, aside from the fact that I grew up listening to McCoy and Train, you know, and it was such an important influence for me. I learned a lot from the way he, um, uh, his sense of dynamics is just fantastic these days, um, and just his presentation and uh, his whole musical sensibility just is a, has been uh, a thing to behold.